Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. This post is from the subreddit Am I the A-hole and it's by user farlibrarian4999. Am I the a-hole for never telling my mother I married into money? I, 34 female, have a difficult relationship with my mother. She had me when she was 17 and was addicted to various substances when I was growing up. She'd leave me with whoever would watch me for days on end and I'd end up mostly raising myself. I left home at 16 and couch surfed with various friends until I was able to get my own place. At 25, I met my now husband and we got married three years later. His family is the polar opposite of mine and are incredible, so loving and warm, I honestly consider his parents mine and call them mom and dad. They also happen to be quite well off, but that isn't something I care about. I mention it because it matters to the story. So, last year, my mother reached out to me after a decade of not speaking to her, wanting to reconnect and introduce me to my little sister, who was two years old. I was confused, as I hadn't even known she'd been pregnant, but it seems she'd been a change of life baby. I thought maybe she'd turned over a new leaf, and if not, I wanted to make sure the kid was okay. At first it seemed like things had changed and she was trying. This illusion lasted for the first few visits over six months, then she broke down. Told me she couldn't do this and asked me to take my sister. My husband and I had a long talk about it. We'd been struggling with fertility and had been considering adoption anyway. We told her, if we were going to do this, we were going to do it right. And we had his family's lawyer ensure it was a legal adoption and airtight, which took several months. My in-laws adore her and consider her their granddaughter. They've even set up a trust fund for her. We have allowed my mother one supervised visit per month, so she's not totally cut off from my sister, but it was during these visits things went badly as she saw how my sister was dressed and the toys she had and realized that they were expensive. She began to rip into us for hiding the fact we have money and how if we'd just given her money she'd have not given us my sister as she could have taken care of her better. I told her, while we have some money, it's mostly my husband's parents' money, not ours, so she had no right to know about it. Also, that I wouldn't have given her money anyway, as I didn't trust her. She broke down calling me a selfish bitch who'd never considered how hard things were for her. I now feel some guilt. My husband has told me if I want to make me feel better, he'll give her money, but that seems like a bad idea as she'd likely use it badly or blow through it and then expect more. Despite this though, I do feel bad. Maybe I should have tried to help her more now that my luck is better, or maybe I should have been honest with her. Am I the a-hole for keeping this from her? No, OP, you are not the a-hole and I'm sorry to say this, but your mother is a user. She uses people. She used other people when you were little so she could drop you off with them and then do whatever it is that she went to do, which I'm pretty sure wasn't anything healthy or good for you. You got away from her at 16 and she didn't even care to look you up for 10 years until she needed to use you in order to take your little sister because apparently life was too hard for her. Now I know what I'm gonna say might sound harsh but people with no accountability just piss me off. There are many people in this world that have a similar life to your mom or even worse and they made it work. They got their crap together and made it work. And from what you tell us, your mom just looks for the easy way out. That's why she dropped your sister off with you and then she found out you had money. And now she's trying to guilt you because she wants to keep on using you. Don't let her and I would also stop all the visitations. This is not good for your sister. I would cut contact with her and not let her around my family until she proves that she's got her crap together. So again, not the a-hole. And what is your judgment? Let me know in the comment section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. OK Remote 1036 says, not the a-hole. Doing the math. Your mom had a second baby at age 49 and she's now 53. She's more than old enough to have figured out how to support herself. Let her continue to take care of herself and focus on your daughter. 
If you do feel worried about your mom's future, you could set aside money in an account. Don't tell her you're doing this for when she's elderly and may be unable to support herself any longer. That would be the time to consider helping her. Dependent aside 9750 says, not the a-hole. If hubby wants to pay for something, it can be a treatment program for mom to get the help she needs. But you are most definitely not the a-hole. Mom is trying to manipulate. And Opie responds, I tried many times to try to get her to get clean over the years before I cut off contact. She had no interest and I don't think that has changed at all. If I thought that she'd even consider it, I'd be having him do that if he truly wants to spend money on her. Destron Commander says, Not the a-hole. There is no good reason why your mother should be upset. The wealth belongs to your husband and his family. In what world does she think she can coerce them into giving her monetary support? And Arius Inc. 3017 says, Not the a-hole. And now just stop it. You're dealing with an addict whose reaction isn't my daughter is safe and being raised in a healthy environment but is saying you could have given me money and helped me. She realized she misplayed her hand with you. She reached out to you to pawn off her responsibilities to her child, not to reconnect. She was going to do it if you had money or not. She got off the gravy train too early and regrets it. Focus on your family and happiness. She'll bleed you dry. I'm sorry and hope I'm wrong, but I've seen and lived this. Additional information from Opie's comments. I want to help her despite how she was with me growing up, but I know that just giving her money is not the right way to go about it. This has brought up a lot of old feelings I thought were gone, including guilt. But I never once said I was thinking of giving her money. I was the one who firmly stated we couldn't give her money. I still feel guilt as there are feelings hard to shake about that. I also only allow her supervised visitations once per month for my sister's sake, not my mother's, as it seemed cruel to take my sister abruptly and never let her see our mother again. But it is being considered now if that's for the best. The only rights my mother has are what my husband and I feel comfortable giving her, so don't worry. I suspected that my mother may have been using when she got pregnant, so we had my sister checked out. She was a little underweight for her age when she came to stay with us and wasn't even slightly potty trained. But beyond that, she seemed in good health. She was very shy at first and barely spoke, but now she talks non-stop and is so clever. Sadly, I don't know who her birth father is and that section of her birth certificate is blank. And I'm pretty sure our mother doesn't even know who he is. My sister was a change of life baby. My mother thought she was going through menopause at first when her period stopped while pregnant at 48. She'd told me this when we first started to talk again under the pretense of letting me meet my sister. Near menopause, it's not uncommon for women to get a last minute boost in fertility. Alright, well the community agrees that OP is not the a-hole and from that additional context we understand that OP doesn't want to give her any money but is trying to think about a way to help her for the sake of her sister. So now let's move on to the update to see what happened next and how the story ends. I got some really good feedback from my post and it led to my husband and I staying up most of the night discussing what we wanted to do and a decision was reached. It wasn't an easy one, but we have a child to think of now and she has to come first. We blocked my mother on everything we possibly could. We blocked her on social media, we changed our phone numbers and we reached out to the family lawyer to get in contact with her to inform her that all visits have been stopped after how she spoke to me in front of my sister. She has to get clean for at least a year with weekly tests if she wants to see my sister again. My mother can contact our family lawyer if she needs help with the tests but beyond that she gets no help from us unless she wants to go to rehab which we will pay for directly to the rehab, not her. My husband, sister and I have also moved in with my in-laws for the time being as my mother knows where we live. We will be looking for a new place and my in-laws are aware of the situation and that we are cutting all contact for now. Honestly, my in-laws are delighted to have us staying with them 
when we arrived, the guest room my sister is using for now had an army of squishmallows on the bed. They are her current obsession. These toys are her current obsession and my father-in-law makes sure to bring a new one each time he sees her. I always think she must have them all now and each time I'm wrong. How he keeps track of what she has and doesn't have, I don't know as he never buys doubles. We are settling in well. We are even planning on a small holiday with just my husband, sister and I to get away from the stress we've been under. Nowhere abroad as she doesn't have a passport yet, but we'll be fixing that soon as we want to take her to Lapland for Christmas. All in all, we are doing alright, though I admit I am feeling very conflicted and guilty over this. Even though I know it's the right choice, it just doesn't make it easy. Thank you all so much for your comments and advice on the original post. Well, OP, I gotta say, this is a positive update. I think you guys are making the right decisions regarding your mom. Hopefully, she gets the message and gets clean and then she can see her daughter again. Now, for your sister, it sounds like she is very well loved and she's enjoying the time with your in-laws. So, on that note, here's wishing you, your husband and your sister the best in the future. Take care OP and thank you for sharing. And now, let's move on to the next post that also has an update. This post is from the subreddit Am I the A-hole and it's by user PurpleSlaw Throwaway. Would I be the A-hole for sending my niece on a road trip? I, 42 female, would like to send my niece, 22 female, on a road trip for her graduation gift. The backstory. My family has a tradition of sending high school graduates on a road trip with friends as a graduation gift. My parents did the same thing when we were younger and took us on many road trips as kids. They are some of my best memories. My niece is graduating from college in May and I want to pay for her to go on a road trip with some friends. Covid hit when she graduated high school so I wasn't able to offer a road trip then. The problem is my sister-in-law, my husband's sister. She's a very uptight and controlling woman. She's a very good mom but keeps my niece on a short leash. My niece has always had strict routines and rules such as no dating, no concerts, no going out with friends, no frivolous spending, etc. My niece is an absolutely wonderful person and is graduating with a degree in chemical engineering and plans on attending grad school. I want her to actually have some fun before she jumps in grad school and full adult life. My sister-in-law doesn't want my niece to go. She thinks road trips are frivolous and expensive. She is an extremely frugal person, extremely dangerous and a waste of time. My sister-in-law does admit she's not a very fun person and that she knows she overreacts to lots of things. When I brought up the road trip recently and me covering all the costs, she said absolutely not. Even though my niece is an adult, she still thinks she can control her daughter. My niece very much wants to go but also doesn't want to disappoint her mom. I tried talking to my sister-in-law about all her objections. Niece has a good car, knows how to fix many things on it, has AAA roadside assistance. All the girls going are mature and not partiers. No one is interested in getting drunk and driving. I have family all along their planned route and she won't have to spend a dime of her own money. As a side note, I paid for niece to go to school outside of what her scholarship didn't cover and sister-in-law still not willing to budge. This is where I might be the a-hole. I told my niece she's an adult and she gets to make her own decisions. I will pay for the trip if she wants to go, no matter what my sister-in-law says. But I worry that I'm overstepping and getting between my niece and her mom. I love my sister-in-law but I don't think it's fair to make my niece have a small life. Life is dangerous and frivolous and it's okay to not run from that. My husband says I should just drop it so I don't damage my niece's relationship with her mom. So would I be the a-hole for paying for my niece to go on this trip? 
Well, OP, I don't think you're the a-hole for wanting your niece to go and for offering to pay and all of that. And I do understand your point of not wanting to get in between the relationship between a mother and her daughter. But in this case, I think the only person putting a wedge in between them is your own sister-in-law. You said it yourself, your niece is a 22-year-old woman. She is an adult that can make decisions for herself. And if your sister-in-law isn't able or doesn't want to see that, then she's the one, as I said, that is going to to be driving a wedge in between her and her daughter. Now this is just an assumption, but I would guess that your niece doesn't like to talk to her mom about much of the stuff that's going on in her life for fear of being judged or told off. So if I was in your shoes, here's what I'd do. I'd keep the offer open for your niece, but I would urge your niece to talk to her mom to get the mom on the approval side. If she tries and she doesn't, then the offer is still there if she wants to take it. And what is your judgment? Let me know in the comment section. And now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Hannah Kelly says, not the a-hole. You didn't say anything untrue to your niece. She absolutely is an adult and is free to make her own decisions. The reality is that maybe the relationship between your niece and her mother needs a little bit of damage. The kind that happens in most mother-daughter relationships during the daughter's teenage years in order to transition to a healthy adult dynamic. V2Den says, not the a-hole. Niece is an adult. If niece wants the gift... Go ahead. And EST666 says, hmm, you would not be the a-hole, really, but be prepared for the wedge you're likely driving between you and your family and potentially between niece and her mom. You're encouraging something sister-in-law has specifically said she doesn't want. Niece is old enough to make her own decisions, but sister-in-law isn't stupid enough to think this is just a massive coincidence and that niece just happens to want to do the one thing you've been encouraging her to do. Your mark will be all over this decision and sister-in-law will likely hate you for it. I'm not saying sister-in-law is necessarily right, but that's likely how she will react. And Opie responds, and that's what I'm worried about. Most of niece experiencing things outside her mother's comfort zone has been because of me. My sister-in-law thinks tight control will keep her daughter safe, and I know you can never guarantee safety. I love her very much. She's overcome a lot, and her daughter is her top priority, but she has no coping mechanism other than control and a tight grip. But I guess I'm just deciding if this is the hill I want to die on. All right, well, the community agrees that OP would not be the a-hole and that the niece should go on the trip if she wants to, but they're also warning her about the possible fallout. Now, let's move on to the update that was almost two years after the original post to see how the story ends. I followed the advice that some people gave me from my last post. I told my sister-in-law I was going to give my niece the money for the trip and then I would drop it. I told my niece the same thing. I'd give her the money and let her make her own decisions. A few months later, my niece came to me and said she was taking the trip after a lot of consideration. She told her mom and it didn't go well. Unfortunately, it caused a huge fight between them and my niece didn't talk to her mom for over two months. During that time, my sister-in-law bombarded me with accusations of taking her daughter away. Eventually, I blocked her on my phone, so the only way she could talk to me was through my husband, her brother. My husband took my side but tried to soothe my sister-in-law telling her she raised a mature and capable person and she had to let go or lose her daughter forever. During that time, my niece was planning her trip but also really missed her mom. She called me crying a lot but never backed down on taking the trip. It was her mom that finally cracked and after months of not talking, she reached out to my niece and apologized. Things improved a little bit, but sister-in-law was still against the trip. My niece told her it didn't matter. She was going and that was that. Niece and her friends did go on their trip and just got back last week. They had tons of fun. The only problems they had were one flat tire and a bad sunburn on their first beach day. They ended up at Disneyland and spent a few days just having the times of their lives. Niece was nice enough to call her mom daily and provide updates to help her mom not flip out too bad. Sister-in-law wasn't happy about her going, but admitted Niece would have put her foot down at some point and the trip was a good excuse. She's still not happy with me, but she did thank me for always loving her daughter, even if we have vastly different ways of showing it. 
niece is still negotiating how to have a better relationship with sister-in-law. Well, OP, I think this is a positive update as the relationship between your sister-in-law and her daughter might actually improve because of this. And I think you just need to give your sister-in-law some time to come around, but I think you'll eventually have a good relationship with her as well. So on that note, here's wishing you all the best in the future. Thanks so much for sharing, OP, and take care. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.